Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4. And today spawning on the west side of the map, playing in red, we've got 3DB playing as the Jean d'Arc faction. And his opponent battling out against him today, spawning in on the east side of the map, playing in blue, representing Team My Insanity. It's going to be Anatand playing as the Order of the Dragon. Welcome everyone to Dry Arabia. As always, hope you guys are having a great morning. Good afternoon, or potentially good evening. We're going to be in for a banger of a game today. I can feel it in my bones. Jean versus Order of the Dragon. Two civilizations that do love to play on the map. Of course, you've got Jean that's very aggressive. French Royal Knights out on the map relatively early, usually. And you've got the Order of the Dragon. Actually, to be fair, don't necessarily have to be on the map. They can go for an Ark and Chapel and plenty of farms, but... It always feels a bit of a tricky one to do that against a civilization so aggressive as Jean. In fact, I think the Order of the Dragon have good flexibility against civilizations like Jean. Minework Palace wouldn't be off the cards. Because, of course, Arkan Chapel's main bonus really is about getting those farms around it. Sure, it does help out every other resource as well, wood and gold. But it does always feel like the Arkan Chapel is centered around those farms. Bear in mind one thing, though. We are playing on the public update preview, the most recent patch for Age of Empires 4, at least the most previewed one. I mean, this is going to be in Season 9. So it's not the main build at the moment, not the main live build, but this is what we're going to be expecting. The Order of the Dragon, the Arkham Chapel circumference of uh, the radius of, of effect has actually been reduced. The only other thing really to note between these two civilizations and what's changed is that Jean is able to now make the Jean's champions or the Jean's riders in the stable or the barracks. Well, of course, the John Riders from the stables and John's champions from the barracks. That's a pretty cool change. I'm not sure I'll necessarily make a change in this particular matchup versus the Order of the Dragon. We shall see. It will be the Minework Palace here for Anatand. Interesting choice. I think it makes a lot of sense because getting farms around uh, the Ark and Chapel against a civilization like Jean, where aggression is going to be pretty obvious. You're going to need to make units, and a farming transition early is going to be tricky. That means the Order of Dragon will need to play for the map. Speaking of which, a double disc stack and boar in the north of the map is actually very nice for the Order of the Dragon. The reason why is because the Order have very premium units, which means they have less of them, which means less of them on the map. But with only one real spot to protect the northern hemisphere of this map, the northern side, I should say, because you know this is a flat earth map, you know, of course, uh, it means that these units don't have to be all dotted around the map. In instead, they have to be just in the north. It works out pretty well for him, Anatan, there. If he's looking to get the deer camp, which I'm sure he will. Now, something that might put a bit of a spanner in the works is that we do know 3DB loves a good professional scouts to get the scouts to get the deer camp back to home. That's certainly one way. If you can't get onto the map, make the map come to you. Now, speaking about you guys... Would like to say a very big thank you for everyone who's been supporting the channel whether it be on twitch or youtube you guys are absolutely legends thank you thank you thank you special shout out of course to the youtube channel members and the twitch subscribers and of course as well the youtube super sticker guys the super chatters thank you so much for your continued support really helps me out on the channel thank you thank you thank you or even just giving the video a thumbs up goes a long way to help boost up the metrics and the youtube algorithm business now, it will be the School of Cavalry, kind of expected there for Jean and 3DB, expecting to see some knights nice and early. The question is, what can 3DB harass? There is a barracks coming up already here for Anatand, looking to keep him nice, safe and secure with a couple of spearmen. You do have to be careful, actually, as the Jean d'Arc faction. A couple of false moves, a couple of hits from the spearmen, and, well, it's going to be problematic, to say the least. Now, B, making himself a complete nuisance, distributing the deer camp, recognising that this is actually a really nice spawned area in the north. Anatan, though, it might try and kill some of the deer camp. No, no, he's just going to let B do his thing. And ultimately, they're still all in the northern half of the map. Now, the Minework Palace, certainly an interesting one, gives them a lot of options. Golden Quiras, Gilded Man at Arms who fall below 30% health, take 20% less damage, really aids that longevity, of course. Not really a unit we'd see in the uh, the Feudal Age at all. Usually we see it in the Castle Age for the Order. And Zornhau for the Landskinesta gives them a bit of a bleeding effect. And then my probably most favourite upgrade for the Order of the Dragon, Bodkin Bolts. The Gilded Crossbowmen deal 20 damage against Siege units. Of which we probably see a lot less of in this particular matchup, but also because they have had a bit of a nerf. Indeed, and also a bit of a rework, I should say, really. Springords now 
more of an anti-melee unit rather than anti-siege. The mangonels, uh, they take a little bit more damage against ranged units, which is a bit tough on them. I think because of that, I think Gilded Crossbowmen are going to have a really good time on this patch. They're incredibly strong as a unit. Yeah, of course, they do absolutely wonders against the French Royal Knights. But with a great base damage, I think they'll do well against most other types of units as well. For the initial stages, though, it looks like it's going to be Spearmen and Horsemen early for Anatand. Not able to venture out on the map just yet, because, of course, the looming threat of these Royal Knights is very real. It looks like uh be getting the mining upgrade and not queued up professional scouts just yet. I mean, he may not get it, but I, I've seen him do it a lot, so we're kind of almost expecting it at this point. We'll see if he does go for it indeed or not. But certainly, it feels like in this matchup, it's he who goes for the farming transition earlier, almost certainly runs out of steam in terms of unit production and could crumble. So I anticipate both players will try and delay any sort of farming transition for quite some time. Does get a couple of arrows in the butt there, the scout, but should survive, or maybe not. Anatan, no, he took the bait, he's following the... No, he's going to lose the scout, he's going to lose the vision. That's a bit of a problem. It means he's not going to have vision where the scouts, are, or the knights are, rather, and so he's going to have to be a bit careful with his spearman placement. Being dragged a little bit. Now, B did get a couple of hits on those villagers, I think, in terms of charge. You can see a couple of weak ones there in the town centre. Anatan just keeping them safe and secure at home now, but not enough to kill a villager, because, of course, these gilded villagers are built different. Significant advantage in terms of HP. So you need a bit more than just a charge from the knights to get the uh, the kills that you would want. And it will indeed be professional scouts coming in for B. So interesting opening. As you can see now, Anatan moving towards the northern side of the map. Looking to get the f uh, the free food on the map. Understandably so. Two spearmen on hand means that these knights probably won't get too much value. And the reason why this matchup is so tough for Jean at times. I'm kind of curious to see how B addresses it. It's because... Okay, so, you know, you've got your knights, you see spearmen on the field, what do you naturally go for? You go for archers. The biggest problem with that in this matchup, the archers scale very poorly. Because it just takes one switch into man at arms from the Anat from Anatand. Those archers, they're not so important anymore. They can sometimes do some damage against crossbows, but they have to get close enough, and if the man at arms are protecting crossbows in the late game, it can be very problematic. Of course, we won't see any man at arms until the castle age, most likely. For now, He's going to be relying on these horsemen just to give the Order of the Dragon some mobility on the map. Speaking of which, he has remade another scout in order to get that vision. Something that's often overlooked by a lot of players, but Anatan, he wants that vision. He wants to understand what is he going to be up against. And he will be up against an archery range, which is now full swing producing those archers, looking to try and mass up enough to get those spearmen numbers down. Looks like he will be going for the boar in the end now as well. Understandably so. Got to be careful against Jean though. She seems to be making way across. But with two spearmen there, should be okay for now. Horseman possibly going to die when the villagers on the berries here. Bees got to be careful. Here comes a charge on the right side as well. Knights diving on villagers in gold. Will lose one villager. You can see the dead body. Possibly loses a second. Knight. Oh, he backed away for a second there and he will survive. And I wonder whether Anatan gets a village kill. He does not. Got a little bit too close for comfort into the town centre. Jean tried to deny the food in the north, but doesn't quite manage to do too much. As the spearmen are on hand to push her away. The archers will be limited in number. I love this play, by the way. It's really important for the Order of the Dragon to whittle down the archer numbers. He doesn't want to let the French or the Jean d'Arc faction really mess up those archer numbers. To take out his spearmen. What that means is that the knights can never really get a clean wraparound or clean damage with the spearmen still on the field. Oh, bit of jankiness there, but with the knights charging in now, should be able to pick off the scout. We'll get it in the end, does indeed. Snipes out the scout. Spearman has to back away. Guild and spearmen are pretty, pretty, pretty good, but against five knights, I think the knights should end up winning that fight. Needs to be careful here, B, though, not to take the bait with the horseman chase. The spearmen are ready there. They're going to charge on. B might lose a knight. I think he loses a knight. Look how powerful this is. He... Oh, God. He, those, those spearmen do so much damage. Of course, B was looking up north, and unfortunately, there's no value here to be had. Outpost has been garrisoned inside. He might even lose a knight. No, he manages to get out of there. He's trying to keep the villagers as idled as possible, but he can't really stay there for too long. 
spearmen getting a little bit too close for comfort on those villagers on berries. Bear in mind, chivalry is coming in play, so those royal knights will start to heal themselves up just as well, because, well, I think I must have used restoration there, because oh, this is the weak knight. Oh, just passing it with the attack move, Anatan possibly could have got that. Royal knight's going to charge in on the gilded spear, get some really good damage, and yeah, we'll get that spearman for free, an extra bit of XP for Jean. Now, B has also consecrated the stable to make these knights even cheaper. So very nice indeed. Nice bit of discount on those guys. Oh, interesting. Early farm coming up for Manitan. He wants to make a transition, right? He doesn't want the transition to be too hard when the need is there. But these knights can't. Oh, he's going to lose one, potentially. No, doesn't quite manage to get the kill there, Anatan. But there's just no way that B can challenge it. Three horsemen could be enough to pick off some more archers, maybe. We shall see. Oh, he's going to go for the Regnus Cathedral. Oh, okay, okay. There's another option, Burgrave. And he's going to go for the Burgrave. He's making a switch. He changed his mind. And I like this switch because, of course... Uh, you know, the Order of Dragon has had a buff on this landmark recently. Instead of a 30% discount on the uh, cost of units and a 30% increase in production speed and uh, research speed, it's actually been increased to 35%. And, you know, in this sort of scenario, if you go for the Regnets, you kind of... It's not a bad idea to pick up the relics. They're a little bit tricky when there's so many knights on the field. But what this does, it, it forces B and Jean to keep making units. And that's not necessarily something that he would want to do. Of course, having plenty of knights is a good thing. But really the idea for Anatand here is to be in the castle age for as long as he possibly can with B-Steel being in the feudal age. And the reason for that is because the main primary unit for Jean is the French Royal Knight. But what castle age does for the Order of the Dragon gives them access to crossbows. And yeah, you can see it already. Double archery range. He is prepping for it. Probably the best unit for the Order of the Dragon. Oh, good body block of the village though. Saved him. Save that one villager. Yeah, probably the best unit, I'd imagine, for the Order of the Dragon. Possibly the best unit in the game. I mean, I would go so far as to say the potential to call the Gilded Crossbow that title. And the reason why is because it just demolishes everything. Of course, there are some other contenders. Maybe some of the Chinese hand cannoneers. Maybe the uh, the new Wingard Rangers. Which, by the way, I will be casting a game soon, hopefully, on that. Uh, an English versus, I believe it was... I believe it was a Jean game, actually. English versus Jean. So... You know, pay attention, make sure you stick out on the channel. Make sure you are subscribed, hit the notification bell so you keep up to date on that one because we've had some crazy changes for the English and I uh, can't wait to showcase it. But enough for that because, of course, we're not seeing the English today. We're seeing the Order of the Dragon versus Jean. Oh, some good pickoffs here. We'll lose one horseman, possibly lose a spearman here. Good night hitting here, but Anatand will be too disheartened. Has got to the Castle Age, of course, and is starting to get the upgrades. Does get the veterancy upgrade in for the Spearman, which is actually going to be fantastic. Do a lot of damage on these knights, and B has to think about this. Really does he want to engage this? It is a Feudal Age army versus a Castle Age army after all, and the biggest problem here is that with the number of Spearmen on show, I wonder whether B is going to tech into archers. I mean, in fact, he kind of really has to, right? It's, it's, it's a hard one. The archers just scale so poorly in this matchup. Just takes one switch into Man at Arms from the Order of the Dragon. Now that they are on Castle Age... And they could do just that, and it would be a really big problem. Oh, Gilded Spearman getting so much value. These knights, oh man, they're getting decimated. Sure, Jean is using her abilities. She did use the Holy Wrath and also Divine Restoration. But she's losing so much, and I think this is a welcome trade here for Anatan. Got a couple of crossbows on the back line. These knight numbers really dwindling, and that really hurts. There's a couple of weak ones. Will he get away with it? He loses one more. There's one there on literally 3 HP. Should be able to get out of there, but... I think a good trade there by Anatand overall because what this does is it forces B to stay in the feudal age for yet longer and as he does that it's, uh, you know, he's going to be up against a, a growing strength in uh, army from his opponent meanwhile plenty of food being brought on in professional scouts has worked quite nicely for B but with all this in mind there has been a farming transition from Anatand and that means that, that the eco is going to be very smooth one thing I worry for 3db's position is he's making so many units and he has to. He hasn't had time for a farming transition, hasn't had the economy for a farming transition. That might hurt him later, because when he does need that transition, it might be about it might be at a really bad time. Speaking about bad time, those spearmen would have had a bad time if they committed to that fight. Instead, he backs away, crossbows tanking a little bit. He does have the second ranged armor coming on in now. Wedge rivets. 
Gonna want that sooner or rather than later. A good number of knights here for B, but it costs food and gold. Two of the key resources you need for the castle age. So every time he makes a knight, it sets his castle age time back. And these crossbow numbers are starting to build up. These knights cannot take that fight. He does now back away. Good number of berries and gold at the back. If B can wall that up, could be quite nice as a source of food on the map to be gathered. With most of the hunt now brought on in for B in the uh, town center location and Anatan, of course, protecting his economy here, bringing those villages, recognizing that's where the army was uh, uh, there for the, for the Jean d'Arc faction. Always threatening, and you can start to see a couple of mana tiles being sprinkled in there, and that's pretty powerful. He has got the golden cuirass upgrade, if I'm not mistaken, already. Oh, not yet. He's going to get it soon, though, I'd imagine. Very nice upgrade. The Order of the Dragon Man at Arms, who fall below 30% health, take 20% less damage. Really increases their longevity. Snipes out the scout, and watch oh, just going a little bit too close for comfort. Spearmen are starting to be sniped a little bit, but those crossbows still getting so much damage. Look how much damage they do! Holy smokes. I mean, these archers can't really even contend with the crossbows. And really, with this armor composition so strong, crossbows, man at arms, spearmen, those archers, so many numbers, but they can only really do some effective work on the spearmen. Everything else just demolishes them. Despite the number of units B has, he's having to back away. I wonder if he's going to go to the car stage. Now, I think in this scenario, there really is only one logical choice for, for tech ups for B. It's got to be. It's got to be the Royal Institute. But he can't really afford it just yet. It's going to lose a couple more knights. Three already gone down. And a fourth. These crossbows absolutely being brutal. And he loses two crossbows for four knights. And that is more than worth it. Because these knight numbers aren't able to escalate. He loses yet another. And he's going to lose a couple more. I mean, the knights might get a charge on this. But Spearman get in play at the appropriate time. And, oh, this is going to be a massacre on these knights. Sure, Holy Wrath comes out. Divine Restoration from Jean. She just about manages to get out of there. But you cannot say the same for these knights. They're all getting demolished. And that will only leave the archers remaining. I think there's only two knights remaining. Jean does bring on her champions. Manatom's waiting. They're fighting that front line. He's trying to distract the units. The crossbows are backing away. But they do so much damage, even to archers. Archers, oh god, look at that. They're, they're barely doing any damage to these man at arms. They are soaking up so much. These man at arms as a front line for the order have done so much work. Only down to three knights now. B. He is struggling with unit numbers, and Anatan is starting to wall up a little bit. Now, the steam might be running out a little bit with the farming transition, but I mean, it's a really good prep for the, uh, the later stages of the game. If we even get there. B, he's really on the back ropes, really struggling on this one. Hasn't been able to find a response to the uh, the, the options and the play styles that the Order brought to the table today. There is a monastery in play coming on up for the Order. Sure, he didn't go for Regnus Cathedral, but as he's starting to establish some map control, could look to start getting some of those relics. As I say that, though, the unit number's starting to build up quite nicely for B. Once again, he's pumping out units for sure. But of course, he's still in the Feudal Age. Now, the wall's certainly going to be useful because of the lack of mobility for the Order of the Dragon. And also now relying on the back resources. Going to be getting the fertilization upgrade. Now, they have changed the icons, actually, for the Tier 2 and the Tier 3 upgrades for lumber and wood. Lumber and uh, food, rather, the gathering. Doesn't make it a little bit more confusing, but it's quite nice to see new, up, uh, new user interface symbols. We'll get used to it eventually. Oh, he's not going to get those walls up in time here, Anatan. We'll lose the villager. Knights charging on in, and this could be rather problematic. I go around to the back of the base, potentially here, and there's a lot of economy that's exposed. Look at these villagers. This could be bad for Anatan. He's got to run on out of there. B, what does he see? He sees the villagers at the moment. In fact, that's Anatan's vision. It does change the color for a second, but we just got to see where those villagers are. It is a bit of a spectator bug. Apologies for that, but do the knight spot them? He doesn't spot them just yet. There, there's, there's villagers there, guys. There's villagers in the corner. He doesn't spot... Oh, my God! He Literally a tile. He doesn't spot it. And B... Oh, what a missed opportunity. But Anatand, he manages to get out of there. The colors switch back again, and... It's 3DB in red. And Anatand in blue, of course. But he manages to survive with those eight villagers. A significant number... And that is crazy. That is a lot, especially when you factor in their gilded villagers. So they're a lot more precious. He's going to break through the Palisades eventually. 
And apologies for the color switch. That is a bit of a user interface bug when you try and switch player perspective. But we are back now on the uh, the red for the Bajan and blue for Anatan. Bit of a wallow in the north. Not really going to work out for him. So yeah, either way, loses villages here on the gold. B is going to get some value now, which is ideal. There's actually the Wallalo in the middle here, and he picked up two archers. Would you believe? Crossbow snipes out the scout, and B going to back away. I think B is thinking about Castle Edge. You can see it in the resource and the food count. I mean, he has to, right? He just had no joy so far. It's good that he got a couple of village kills. We'll put a bit of a spanner in the works, but it could have been so, so much more. These villagers really got away with it. Snipes the villager, that was his own. 3DB, these archers are becoming a lot less relevant. No rules. Yeah, I mean, there aren't really any spearmen on the field anymore for the Order of the Dragon. So these archers are now pretty redundant. And it will be the Royal Institute. No real surprises there. Kind of has to, ultimately. Needs to get some tech ups faster if he can. But he's got to get there first. And Anatan senses it coming, right? He recognizes now B is probably trying to go up. A bit of a wallalo here on the villagers. Oh, will he get it? I don't think he does. He gets sniped. Nice try, though. Could have been, you know, pretty bad for him. But he does spot the tech up, right? So he knows what's happening. And he wants to get these night numbers down whilst he still can. This is a great play by Anantan. The scouting on that, just knowing what B is up to, knowing that he's planning to go up to the next stage, is so, so pivotal because he's going to try and punish him. He does get to the castle age. But he's got to get the technologies. And he's struggling on food. Doesn't have the food income. He doesn't have the farming transition. And uh, whatever farms he does have, Anatand is making it idle. There's a knight going around the back. And the veteracy will come on in, but it's still 20 seconds away or so. Village on the wood completely idled. It looks like Anatand's going for the village around the back. This could be brutal. There's nothing protecting him here right now. Those knights going to get in position, but those archers are still feudal age archers. They're not going to do anything against the Order of the Dragon units. He's going to take the charge on in. Knights do dive on in against the Manatons. arms that are tanking heavily. Now the Veteracy does come on in. Holy Wrath comes on in, but Jean gets sniped. The crossbows in great numbers and doing so much damage to these knights. They're getting absolutely mutilated. Knight numbers not really holding here at this point. Round the back, that Gilded Knight is running havoc, but there are a couple of French knights chasing, and the Manatons have done a great job of tanking against those Royal Knights, and now it la Oh god, this is... This is a massacre. Those archers stand absolutely no chance. The crossbow man at arm combination for the Order of the Dragon sees out the game. GG gets called. A cracking game of Age of Empires 4. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. More importantly, make sure you're subscribed and you've hit the notification bell for another video, hopefully in a couple of days. Take care and see you next time.